One day, Thomas was waiting at the junction when a bus came into the yard. Hello, said Thomas, who are you? I'm Bertie, who are you? I'm Thomas, I run this line. So you're Thomas. Ah, I remember now, you stuck in the snow. I took your passengers and Terence pulled you out. I've come to help you with your passengers today. Help me, said Thomas crossly, going bluer than ever and letting off steam. I can go faster than you. You can't. I can. I'll race you, said Bertie. Their drivers agreed. The station master said, are you ready? Go. And they were off. Thomas never could go fast at first, and Bertie drew in front. Thomas was running well, but he did not hurry. Why don't you go fast? Why don't you go fast? called Annie and Clarabel anxiously. Wait and see, wait and see, hissed Thomas. He's a long way ahead, a long way ahead, they wailed. But Thomas didn't mind. He remembered the level crossing. There was Bertie fuming at the gates while they sailed gaily through. Goodbye, Bertie, called Thomas. The road left the railway and went through a village so they couldn't see Bertie. They stopped at the station. Peep, peep, peep. Quickly, please, called Thomas. Everybody got out quickly. The guard whistled and off they went. Come along, come along, sang Thomas. We're coming along, we're coming along, sang Annie and Clarabel. Hurry, 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 panted Thomas, looking straight ahead. Then he whistled shrilly in horror, for Bertie was crossing the bridge over the railway, tooting triumphantly on his horn. Oh, dearie me, oh, dearie me, groaned Thomas. He's a long way in front, a long way in front, wailed Annie and Clarabel. Steady, Thomas, said his driver. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet, we'll beat Bertie yet, echoed Annie and Clarabel. We'll do it, we'll do it, panted Thomas bravely. Oh, bother, there's a station. As he stopped, he heard a toot. Goodbye, Thomas, you must be tired. Sorry I can't stop. We buses have to work, you know. Goodbye. The next station was by the river. They got there quickly, but the signal was up. Oh dear, thought Thomas, we've lost. But he felt better after a drink. Then James rattled through with a goods train, and the signal dropped, showing the line was clear. Hurrah, we're off, hurrah, we're off, puffed Thomas gaily. As they rumbled over the bridge, they heard an impatient toot, toot, and there was Bertie waiting at the red light, while cars and lorries crossed the narrow bridge in the opposite direction. Road and railway ran up the valley side by side, a stream tumbling between. Thomas had not crossed the bridge when Bertie started with a roar and soon shot ahead. Excited passengers in train and bus cheered and shouted across the valley. Now Thomas reached his full speed and foot by foot, yard by yard, he gained till they were running level. Bertie tried hard, but Thomas was too fast. Slowly but surely he drew ahead, till whistling triumphantly he plunged into the tunnel, leaving Bertie toiling far behind. I've done it! I've done it! panted Thomas in the tunnel. We've done it, hooray! We've done it, hooray! chanted Annie and Clarabel, and whistling proudly they whooshed out of the tunnel into the last station. The passengers gave Thomas three cheers and told the station master and the porters all about the race. When Bertie came in, they gave him three cheers too. Well done, Thomas, said Bertie. That was fun. But to beat you over that hill, I should have to grow wings and be an aeroplane. Thomas and Bertie now keep each other very busy. Bertie finds people in the villages who want to go by train and takes them to Thomas, while Thomas brings people to the station for Bertie to take home. They often talk about their race. But Bertie's passengers don't like being bounced like peas in a frying pan, and the fat controller has warned Thomas about what happens to engines who race at dangerous speeds. So, although, between you and me, they would like to have another race, I don't think they ever will.